The spiritual path is when you're willing to look at things which don't fit the, the preconceived notion of what is. Welcome, beloved viewers, to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. Today's program is part one of a three-part series featuring an interview with a popular quantum physicist, author, and lecturer from the United States, Dr. Fred Allen Wolf. Dr. Wolf earned a PhD in theoretical physics from the University of California, Los Angeles, USA in 1963. He has lectured across the world, conducted extensive research in his field, written many award-winning books, such as Taking the Quantum Leap in the Spiritual Universe, and served as the resident physicist on the Discovery Channel program, The No Zone. Dr. Wolf has appeared in popular films such as What the Bleep Do We Know and The Secret. He is known for explaining the complex laws of quantum physics in an engaging way so that non-scientists can better understand them and see how they relate to spiritual principles. His fascinating work has sparked the interest of many to deeply inquire into the very nature of existence and the mind. Let us now meet the esteemed Dr. Wolf. Dr. Wolf, welcome to Toronto. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Tell us about your background. Um, I've worked in many different places. I've worked uh, for the government. Uh, I've taught at many different universities, the University of Paris, the University of London, mm -hmm. the Han Meitner Institute of Nuclear Research in Berlin, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, San Diego State University in, in California, and uh, many other institutions as well. Okay. So what motivates you to study the connection between spirituality and quantum physics? Mainly because my interest is in the nature of magic. Mm -hmm. Now that may seem strange, but uh, as a child I developed a severe speech impediment mm -hmm. and I stammered very, very badly. Mm -hmm. And one of the two techniques I learned to improve my speaking ability, one was to practice uh, deep breathing and meditation. Mm -hmm. This was before I knew what meditation was. I was only nine or ten years old, mm -hmm. but my speech therapist that was one of the tools that she used to get me to concentrate on my breath and change my rhythm, so to speak, mm -hmm. which of course is a meditation technique. And I also practiced doing what I would call magic in front of a mirror. And when you do magic tricks where you're actually performing, it is a performance. It's like a magician is like a one stage show and one being because you're not only telling a story but you're also demonstrating or visualizing or showing people an effect as a result of the story. And this means you have to talk. Mm -hmm. And so these two things in concert got me out of stammering and also got me interested in this process of what I call magic. Mm -hmm. So when I began to study more deeply or in a deeper way, uh, the nature of uh, the world I was living in, uh, I became intrigued with light, just the light that we see. And I said, what the heck is this? What, how does it work? What is light? And that led me into what is anything? And that got me into th studying physics. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what led me into uh, theoretical physics because I'm always interested in the, how do we understand what's happening? And that naturally led into quantum physics, which is the major physics of today, and uh, that's what got me started. The Buddhist sacred text, the Flower Ornament Sutra, says, our perception of the three realms arise from the mind, as well as the mind is like a master painter experienced at painting all sorts of things. In terms of our perception of the outer world, Dr. Wolf sees similarities between the principles of quantum physics and spirituality, particularly regarding the role of the mind in shaping what we see. As a physicist, what is your view of the soul? Well, it's an interesting concept. Uh, and of course, it's gone through a lot of change 
uh, based upon which culture you deal with. Um, in ancient culture, I think the soul was connected with the breath. So you said, I am, or Atman, I breathe. Uh, there was a connection with soul, breath. So there was a connection there. That as long as a person was breathing, he was quote unquote souling. Mm -hmm. His soul was present. Mm -hmm. It was interacting. It was uh, so there was a connection with that. And since it was like breath, invisible to the eye, the soul was some kind of invisible presence. And so the natural tendency was, as we became more and more enlightened, to some extent was to associate it the soul with something with more than just the breath, something which inhabited the body uh, like a, uh, an apartment dweller inhabits an apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so these are the, the concepts. From a physics point of view, it became a more, uh, well, it became, uh, let's say, curious in a certain kind of funny way because in quantum physics, we learn something about reality as not being out there by itself. There had to be a process mm -hmm. by which something recognizes reality out there. And by recognizing or cognating or becoming aware of reality out there, where out there can mean anything from the tip of your nose to the planet in the sky to the person across the street uh, to almost to anything at all, that this process of noticing, this process of becoming aware uh, involved a recognition, a consciousness, a mind, and that if the mind altered the way it went about this process of recognizing, cognating, looking at the out there, the experience would change in here. In quantum physics, we learned that as you began to delve deeply into that question of how what you bring to bear to observe interacts, affects, is in relation to the thing which you are observing, we began to realize that the thing that we are observing is not just something that is itself physically there, mm -hmm. but is something that has been constructed in our mind, in our memory, as having a certain form, shape, size, material substance, all the various attributes we call physical reality. And that without these memorized concepts of these things that we see are out there, we would not be able to even construct a picture or a semblance of understanding of what's out there. In other words, there is no out there out there without an in here, in here acting. Quantum physics is highly complicated and deals with things which are not perceivable in our physical surroundings. Rather, we must rely on models created by the mind to grasp them. Much about spirituality is also about the non-physical and invisible, and Dr. Wolf sees this fact as an area of commonality between the two fields. As you delve even deeper into things that are subatomic, that are subatomic or sub-microscopic, things which we can't see with our naked eye, we find that the very things we're looking at themselves are fuzzy. They're not rigid. Uh, things of, of macroscopic, that is large scale size, that we can see with our naked eye, uh, they're not so fuzzy, they're pretty solid, and that's how we've come to come to agreement about what's this and what's that. 
we say, ah, oh, that's a ball and that's a chain. Uh, that's a ball and that's a person's hair. They're not the same thing. We, we, we have a way of describing that because we can see it. But when you're talking about atoms and subatomic matter, we can draw only pictures in our mind because we can't really see these things. And in fact, what we bring to bear to look at these things alters them. So the current thinking right now is there really is no actual thing out there if we're talking about subatomic matter, atoms, subatomic matters, things which make up the nucleus of the atom, the so-called quarks, and the uh, things we call bosons, which are little particles which uh, mediate the relationship between the quarks, which then hold the nucleus together, called gluons. When we begin to look at these various pictures we have, which are theoretical in our mind, never seen any of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, we do them to give us some structure so that when we do experiments and look at the results of the experiments, the model will help us explain why the results look the way they look. So that's what we do in quantum physics is that we make up a model of our mind that we never really ever see, mm -hmm. that we then say is what's happening at that level. We have to see them only as the experience we have of being conscious. And so this is where the two, I think, come into alignment with each other, the quantum physical view that uh, it's only when you bring your mind into the picture that you begin to make pictures of what's going on at the subatomic level is very similar to what you do when you bring your mind into your spiritual presence. Mm -hmm. You make a picture of what that spiritual presence is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a similar process, I think, going on. Mm -hmm. So if, if I understand you, what you're saying that there is a link between quantum physics and spirituality. Well, I don't know if I would call it a link in the sense of there's a chain holding those two mm -hmm. together. I would say there's a similar process of investigation which has to go on. Mm -hmm. And the thing which is very important to realize in both of these fields is that what you bring to bear affects what you perceive as reality of the, whatever it is you're looking at. Mm -hmm. What I bring to bear to look at an atom, if I bring to bear a certain way of looking, it seems wavy, almost unsubstantial. If I bring to bear a particle way of looking at things, uh, where I want to find out where things are or when they are, things look like little balls, little marbles, little pieces of things. So how I look changes what I perceive. So I can't say what an atom really is per se. I can only say what it's like when I perceive it a certain way. Same thing in spirituality. Thank you, Dr. Fred Allen Wolf for providing your deep insights into quantum physics and how this science is related to spirituality. Your enthusiasm and love of knowledge have certainly inspired many people to take a closer look into the nature of reality. For more details on Dr. Fred A. Wolf, please visit www.fredallenwolf.com. Books, CDs, and DVDs by Dr. Wolf are available at the same website. Enlightened viewers, please join us next Monday on Science and Spirituality for part two of our program featuring more from our interview with Dr. Wolf. Thank you for your company on today's program. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after noteworthy news here on Supreme Master Television. May all lives be blessed with peace, happiness, and God's loving grace. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.